First off, Kate, I'm a huge Western fan. I've seen so many Westerns. It's amazing. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> that said, Savage State is a very, to me, a very original movie. And I thought it was, I was wondering where it was going. And it's just so many really cool things about it that I really loved. From your perspective as a collaborator as and as an actor, what did you find special about this project on a personal level? I mean, f- for me, the the thing that that was special about it was the the perspective of David, the the director, because obviously he he kind of took this axis of the this French family at the outbreak of the Civil War, who's kind of taking off. So there was a very very specific perspective that we don't usually see in a classic Western. And obviously the, um, the fact that all of the, the main characters are, the, the kind of heroes of it are, are women is also something that we haven't seen in a ton of films, so. You know, can you just talk about your character? You know, at once your character is the antagonist of the film, but if you were actually to step inside her shoes, there are some decisions she makes in the name of, I guess, passion and love, but also she sort of, in, in my in my book, she doesn't live in a completely evil black area. She lives in sort of a gray area. Is that something that really attracted you to this person? For me, she's, it's not, she's not a character that you can define as good or bad because she, she lives off of instinct. So for me, what I like about her is that she's more like an animal. And part of this is this sort of need to to keep what she considers hers and even above and beyond revenge or things like that, that there's, there's something about her that this passion that she has, that I don't even know how, if she herself understands that it's love that she feels for this man, or if it's just some sort of instinct that she feels to kind of get him or that drives her to what she does. And that's what I like about her. I mean, as far as you relating to her character regarding instinct, and I'm sure there's a lot of education and craft involved in what you do as an actor, but usually if you speak a certain language, you're going to enter some kind of cinema and television through one lens, but you've really expanded your canvas. Can you tell our listeners and viewers about just your background as an actor and just taking the, I guess, refreshingly, the road less traveled? Um, I mean, I guess I, I chose the road that chose me. Um, I My background is mostly in theater. And I started out in New York. I went to NYU um, to the Tisch School of the Arts. And I was in the experimental theater wing. So I was always kind of drawn to more, not necessarily a classic approach to making theater. I like the, the idea that you sort of know every aspect of it, you know, how to hang the electrics, how to do the sound, kind of everybody's in it all together. And then I met um, a French theater director while I was at school and started working with his company. And he's a contemporary um, theater director and writer here in Paris. I'm, I'm based in Paris right now. And then through his company who I worked with, I, I kind of was going back and forth from New York to Paris and I guess it's, you know, work begets work. And so the artists that I met through the theater that I was doing kind of led me down a path towards a certain kind of cinema that is also, I guess, would be considered independent or auteur cinema. Um, But that's also what I'm attracted to. So I guess it kind of worked out. Yeah, it's I'm I'm so glad that it worked out for you. But I I guess it's hard to really encapsulate in a 12 to 15 minute interview. But you said you're attracted to independent auteur cinema, as opposed to, I guess, once sheltering in place stops, I guess, uh, commonplace mass market cinema, what attracts us attracts you to the more intimate brand of storytelling and filmmaking? I can't say that it's that it it doesn't attract me because I I hate this kind of like commercial versus independent, like it's uh, like one is good and and one is bad or that it's bad if a lot, we all want everybody to see our films. I mean, I would love to have Savage State be a big commercial success that everybody sees, you know, it's not like, I don't know, it's like cool to not have people see your stuff, (laughs) Um, but, but I think that the, it's more the, the, the aspect of when somebody has something to say and they're not, um, they're not squashed down by things like branding and 
25 people in a room saying, well, you can't have that ending because that's not marketable. That kind of thing is what leads me more towards a, what would be considered auteur or independent because, I mean, I don't know, life is sad. It's nice to not always have a fucking happy ending, you know? Oh, are we allowed to say- Oh, no, no, end? yeah, totally, yeah. totally. You, were, you talked about grandiose and epic and just when you saw the, maybe the initial cut or maybe even the final cut, were you surprised at how- visually breathtaking this movie is because I was blown away by some of the compositions in this movie. Uh, yes, I, I admit that I definitely was because it's, um, it is an independent film. It was definitely made, it, it was a big vision with not all of the money needed to make it look as amazing as it is. And I think that the the director and the cinematographer and everybody who who worked on it really managed to to give it that that sweeping majesty that you know that that, that has that so many you know the the genre of westerns gives because it has to have that sort of open road the the savage unknown kind of thing in it and um and, you know, and there was definitely so, some landscapes that were not uh, so kind to <laughs> do the shoot either. We had, you know, rainstorms in the desert and everything. So <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Kate, uh, just regarding my movie, po- I do a movie podcast and just right off the top of your head, can you name one of your all time favorite films? And what is it about this specific film that still resonates with you today? Um, I think... One of my go-tos is Me and My Brother by Robert Frank. Um, it's, uh, it, it's a film that he did. And the reason it, it resonates is because when I saw it, I was like, what am I watching? It's this crazy cut up uh, that uh, Robert Frank, that, who's better known as a photographer, made um, with Peter Orlovsky, who was with Alan Ginsberg for a very long time, and his brother Julian. And Julian was he had mental problems that they don't really define. I mean, obviously it was done in like the late sixties, early seventies, I think, I don't know exactly what year. And um, he starts off and he's actually in it. It's sort of like this fiction docu fiction kind of thing. And in halfway through, he, he's this very kind of mysterious character. He decides he doesn't want to be in it anymore. And so he's replaced by Christopher Walken. And it's just sort of this like weird cut up thing. You And there's, you know, scenes that are kind of, the movie within the movie and then there's stuff that's actually just real life at parties and it's I think it was just one of the first films that I saw that doesn't have a direct narrative and that I just thought like what is going on with this and and that is that that I really liked and that oh we can this can be cinema too it doesn't just have to be a a story like from beginning to end so I think that that's one one for the ages for me yeah, my final question is Savage State it I love how it breaks down myth, the myth of the uh, American West, but just the, the idea and myth of a lot of people like to say just in, as a passing fancy, whether they're reading Henry Miller or literature or watching the uh, French Nouvelle Vogue, they go, I, I would love to one day live and work in Paris. For you personally, is there something to be said about the reality being much more pleasurable and than, than the actual myth of it. You know what I'm saying? The actual, you're actually right there on the bunker working every day and living living here. Well, I mean, I, mean, I think that for anybody who wants to be a, an actor or a writer or a filmmaker, it's everybody always tells you like, oh, good luck with that. And what are you gonna do as your real job? So anytime I am on, you know, you go where the work is. And obviously I, mean, I love Paris and I love the people who I work with here, but I mean, my happiest place is actually on a stage or on a set. So that could be in any, you know, in any country, any place, because it's it's the work that that makes me happiest. So I guess the, the fact that I'm working is, yeah, reality is definitely better than than the dream. I remember interviewing Mary Louise Parker years ago, and she said she prefers stage over cinema and TV because once you have a moment with the audience and the people you're working with, that moment is it just it's just shared by you and the audience and then when everyone leaves it's just that do you ever get that feeling it's that transitory but everlasting moment in a way of course i mean i also prefer stage to cinema but there's something about i mean obviously there's the rehearsal process and all of that that i enjoy but the immediacy of 
of it happening when you're when you're on stage is something really incredible that you share with an audience. But for me, there's also this thing of it's it's like a crazy addiction because I have terrible stage fright. And so before I go on, I'm like, please let me get hit by a bus. Please let something happen. I can't do this. I this is it. I'm gonna change careers. I can't handle this anymore. And then I step on stage and you know, especially on like not every night, but on the best nights, all of a sudden it's over and you don't even see that you didn't even see your time go by. And and then I think, oh, I can't wait till tomorrow to do it all over again. And it's just this cycle like that that you know, it's, there's nothing better, I guess. Okay, thank you so much for your time and rescheduling and everything. Really appreciate it and love your film. Thank you so much.